It was G.K. Shesterton who said, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. And these precisely are the sentiments that run through me as I come to the last day of my stay here. I am full of gratitude for the love that you have all shown towards myself and the mission. I will give you here a summary of our mission. There are currently three priests who run the mission in Nigeria. Myself, Father Thomas Tajeka, and Father John Okerulu. And there are in all 14 different places where we administer the sacraments. And of these places, two are outside of the country, although in one of the places we, we, we are still about to start um, to give the sacraments. We also have a seminary which has grown from being a house of study to a full-blown seminary. There are currently two priests who serve as professors, myself and Father Okerulu. Presently, there are eight students in the seminary, but this will change in September when we will receive at least five more candidates of which two of them uh, would be from outside of Nigeria. Two of our seminarians, Benjamin and Jonathan, will be due for, uh, for the priesthood next year, early next year. And so you can imagine that the next few months will be busy for us back home. We also recently, in February, began a school for our children in one of our missions. And this school is modeled after your school here at St. Gertrude. We see the urgent need to save our children as best we can from the corrupting influence of modern society. Although it is still in its early stages, we are determined to keep it going. I have sought for and obtained practical help and advice from the school here, and I have also been assured of their continued support in this regard. The three, this school is currently in charge of Father Thomas, uh, or Jekka. The three priests in Nigeria also spend their time traveling to the various chapels according to timetable. So you can see how grateful we are that you have supported us through the years to make this possible. I am, of course, very much aware that this is all the result of the, of the mercy of God and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But you made yourselves willing instruments of God's mercy in our mission. Our gratitude also goes to the first, to, beyond to the first time we reached out to Bishop Dolan who took up the task of looking after us as far back as 2006. And I must also thank the, the clergy of the Most Holy Trinity Seminary for accepting myself and the other Nigerians at the time, and for training and giving us the discipline which they put in us 
which has been so useful in our mission. To the clergy at St. Gertrude the Great, I owe special gratitude for making this place like a second home for us. May the good Lord reward you all for your kindness. Dear faithful, it has become clear to me in the course of our apostolates that it is only the divinely revealed truths of the Catholic faith that can keep the world from total darkness. If there is any light left in this world, it is the light of the Catholic faith. The purity of our doctrine, the unchanging principles originating in God himself, must be put to use to bring some sanity into the world. I have come to observe in the course of our apostolate that if one consistently applies the truths, these truths, one is able, God, God's grace assisting, to provide some respite even in the most difficult cases. We live in a world where the standards are constantly changing. Man has put away the divine law and has replaced it with a multitude of human laws. And as a result, he has become more and more miserable and blind. I have seen the importance of applying the church teachings to practical moral problems. And this really is the reason, on the one hand, why I'm grateful both for the training received and, on the other hand, the need to, to maintain these principles. It is as bad at home as it is here in terms of the corruption of society. It is only the law of God, the natural law, for example, the divine positive law, the moral teachings, and so on, that can save or keep things from getting worse. I see always the connection between doctrine and practice in the course of our work back home. The excellence of teaching, of the teaching, is seen in the change which takes place in the lives of the faithful. On the other hand, we know our place in all of this and do not presume that what we see is anything less than the work of God. We see also that we are mere instruments or, as the scripture says, unfruitful servants. And even when we see the misery resisting and the seeming resistance to God's grace, we know also by the teaching of our holy doctrine that we are not to despair, that all things are subject to God, that in his time, according to his will, it will be done in the precise way he has ordained. And finally, I hope that you, con you all continue to persevere in the work to which you have all been called. Even if the fruit is not apparent here in this life, you will be shown the beautiful results of your charity and perseverance and the work that has been done in you and through you by God's grace. And it is my prayers that as you persevere in, in his work, that God himself give you the encouragement and the strength to continue until the very end. 
God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.